Broadening the Perspective, Understanding Oppression in Our Modern Society by Margaret Shetler and Megan Kelly. What comes to mind when you hear the word oppression? Historically, oppression brings up the connotation of a ruler or government that exercises unfair power, depriving people of their human rights. Images of the Nazi regime, fascism, communism, North Korea, Hitler, or Stalin are brought to mind. We may think about slavery in the United States and racial segregation. We may even associate oppression with our own nation's liberation from the tyranny of Britain. The colonies wanted to be free from tyrannical and oppressive rule that threatened their life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Since King George of Britain did not secure those rights, it was the right of the people to overthrow that government and put a new one in place. It can be hard to talk about oppression existing in our modern society when there is no explicit definition, but these associations are a good starting point. We care about oppression because of its effect on people. We care about oppression because of its effect on ourselves. We care about the Holocaust and the danger of the Nazi regime because of the horrors committed against humankind. We care about slavery and racial segregation because of the subjugation and exploitation of a race just because of the color of their skin. We care about ending oppression. Progress has been made, right? There has been progress made to fight oppression. The Nazi regime has been overthrown. Slavery has been abolished. But what if oppression has taken hold in different forms in our society? But what if you looked at oppression this way? Think of it like a birdcage. Marilyn Fry offers us a birdcage analogy that forces us to begin to understand oppression beyond what it may typically be thought of. The idea of Fry's birdcage analogy is that oppression isn't a single instance of constraint or limitation. Rather, there are systematically related barriers that contribute to oppression. Our society is set up with institutions that work together to systematically limit someone's opportunity due to their belonging in a certain social group. Take, for example, an ex-incarcerated individual who has served their time and is committed to creating a better life for themselves. Based solely on being an ex-convict, this individual is withheld from social welfare programs, faces extreme levels of social stigma, and is forced to disclose their criminal record when searching for employment. These are only some of the barriers that work together to debilitate this individual from leading a dignified life after serving time. This is not to mention the inequality in our justice system that may have contributed to their circumstance. It is only when you step back, stop looking at the wires one by one, microscopically, and take a macroscopic view of the whole cage that you can see why the bird cannot go anywhere. It is also important to consider the internal state of the bird inside the cage. Not only does confinement from systematically interwoven barriers hinder the bird from freedom, but it begins to affect how the bird thinks of itself. An inherent consequence of confinement the bird begins to see itself just as the people outside of the cage do. An identity is imposed on the bird that does not define the bird as an individual, but only as the bird belonging to a group. Identities are defined simply by gender, race, socioeconomic status, religion, sexuality, and other factors. Sandra Barkey, in On Psychological Oppression, Describe psychological oppression as an institutionalized and systemic form of oppression that creates barriers internally, potentially even unconscious ones. Psychological oppression inhibits an individual from living a dignified life because they are internally limited by external systematic forces. Now perhaps we can understand how oppression is not just laws put in place by a corrupt government regime. Oppression is the unjust systematic constraints that inhibit the development and exercise of capacities that allow for an individual to live a dignified life. Broadening our definition of oppression gives us the ability to understand how economic, political, or cultural institutions of our well-meaning society can still be oppressive to many social groups. Though oppression has taken other forms, it still exists and we should still care about it. Arguably, the Nazi regime or slavery is much more troubling than less explicit forms of oppression. This fact is undeniable. The Nazi regime and the Holocaust is an instance of oppression where the injustice and moral wrongs were explicit. The Holocaust stemmed from prejudice and led to the oppression of another group to an extreme. A social group justified their superiority and another group's inferiority.
It may be hard to see how oppression's different forms in our own society are still issues that we should be concerned about. But when a large population of our society is marginalized or faces systemic violence, in a free and democratic society, we should be concerned. When social groups are hindered from being useful participants in society and are permanently confined to lives of social marginality, we should be concerned. When implicit biases lead employers to dismiss a black, more qualified applicant in favor of a white applicant, or when police officers target black individuals, we cannot ignore that oppression exists. When women, members of minority groups, or the LGBTQ community carry the burden of fear that they will face violence because of their membership of a specific group, we cannot deny that there is a systemic aspect to the violence they face. Acts of violence are wrong. They are injustices. But what makes violence a phenomenon of social injustice and not merely an individual and moral wrong is its systemic character, its existence as a social practice. One might say, well, I experience an injustice. I am oppressed. Broadening the way we define oppression may challenge the degree to which instances of injustice can be categorized as oppression. That said, understanding the interacting systems contributing to oppression from a macroscopic view forces us to see that single instances of injustice cannot be equated to oppression. We should still care about those injustices, but injustices can still exist without being classified as oppression. A man saying he's oppressed by the patriarchy due to an inability to cry in front of another man, an example used by Fry, limits the scope of what our definition of oppression really is. A man who feels restricted by other men to not cry in no way inhibits his development and exercise of capacities. In fact, it does the opposite. A man is benefited by these same systems that restrain him from emotionally expressing himself in front of other men. This man has dignity. He has self-respect. Oppressed individuals, rather, face systemic injustices. Oppression is directed at members of a group simply because they are members of that group, inhibiting their ability to develop this capacity at all. One might say, I'm not trying to be oppressive. I'm not racist. Oppression doesn't have to be intentional for it to exist. It may be hard to see one's role in an oppressive system if they are never forced to acknowledge it. Peggy McIntosh in White Privilege Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack says, In my class and in my place, I did not see myself as racist because I was taught to recognize racism only in individual acts of meanness by members of my group, never in invisible systems conferring unsought dominance on my group from birth. So is having a broader definition of oppression helpful? Broadening your understanding of oppression and accepting that it is a pressing issue is important. Having a definition of oppression is helpful, but analyzing your role in oppressive systems and potential action that can be taken is the next step. It starts by asking yourself, how am I contributing to the oppressive systems? What are the ways in which I can use this new understanding to address injustices in my own community, in our broader society? Now the world